Hey guys, it is hush. Hey guys, hush. Hey guys, it hush. Hey guys, it oh my god. Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and today we are going to take a look at Future State Aquaman number one. Now, this book was really good, and I'm going to say right off the bat that I loved the character before the book was put out, and I'm specifically talking about both of them. I think Jackson Hyde has been long overdue for a promotion. Not that I don't like Tempest, but he is a good character. And I love Andy Curry. I think seeing her in Mira's belly and then seeing her grow up in the comics to a point she is relatively new. Seeing her take her first steps. I love the babies. And now we see her as a little bit older. And I think that really drew me in. And it doesn't help. It definitely helps, rather, that Brandon Thomas did a great job of mapping this out. But there is one massive complaint I have. And we will get right to that. But make sure you guys are subscribed. As always, hit like. Let me know down below what you thought of this. If you are interested, or maybe you're not reading Future State at all, and that's okay. I totally understand it. So, let's take a look right at my complaint. And if you can't guess what it is, it is the fact that they made Jackson Hyde look like Jason Momoa. Now, that's not a big deal. I understand that. But... Jason Momoa in the movies is obviously Arthur, not Jackson. So don't replicate something you see in the movies because it's in your brain. Make him his own character on the cover. He looks great. His own character. Um, at least in my opinion, they should have lightened his hair some or darkened his skin or a little bit of both. But it, it's a little unfortunate that they're basing him off of somebody that he's not. Because he is a good character. He is his own character. And I, I really enjoy him. Especially his whole issue with daddy issues. Right? Oh. One of the most typical tropes in comics. Black Manta being his father is a huge issue. So let's go right into this. Uh, first off we see them going against. And they are on Earth. This is a terrible, terrible nightmare. My biggest fear in life is the water. And it's not necessarily the water. It is what is in the water. If this was in the water, I would never go near a lake, pond, ocean, anything again. That's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. So we see them battling off. And um, he has a little bit of a moment where he's losing, right? And um, see, it just looks so much like Jason to me. It really, really does. So, And then we go back. We go to the future, right? And he is talking to a person that is within this ocean. And we're going to talk a little bit about it. But he says, you know, my name is Jackson Hyde. I am the Aquaman. So right away, we know that the mantle was passed from Arthur to Jackson and not to Andy. I am hoping somewhere we get the answers as to why. We get to know why he gave it to Andy or Jackson. I'm sorry while Andy is more powerful, and we will see that here in a minute, her being more powerful would be the easy choice. But I do think Jackson definitely deserves it more, being more of a character that's been around for quite some time. And I'm still, when we go back six years ago, you can see Jackson as his own character. It's when you blast to the future that you really see him, in my eyes, as Jason and only Jason and that's unfortunate so Black Manta escapes again he is out like a light and then when he does come to realize that you know Andy is out of it too but she's underneath the water and he calls out for her and the first thing she says is no I am not Aqualass I am Aqua Woman I love it she's kind of a tomboy she's like a little 
little defensive over this name thing. And, and I get it. I was 12 and, and, and a, you know, boy trapped in a girl's body at one time too. But um, they get into a bit of an argument. And they go into the whole daddy issues thing. And talk about Black Manta. And, and then talk about... Mm, Arthur. So what happened? I don't know at this point what's this terrible thing that happened with the original Aquaman. She says, you're not Aquaman. You will never be Aquaman. She's pretty upset. And she says, her dad made a huge mistake. And now we have to pretend like he didn't. So what mistake could he have possibly made that would be that bad so i don't know i guess we'll learn that and why learn eventually why jackson got the title which i think is great i'm just saying ha she has a different power now this power is very similar to her dad's obviously her dad can communicate with fish there's one main difference in that power she does not communicate necessarily with fish she controls them and she doesn't like it because she takes away their free will. And I actually really respect that. I think it shows a lot of integrity for a character that you don't like it. Because if, you know, there was an inherently evil person, they would love that. Especially being, you know, of the sea. They really will. So, one also thing I loved about this is you see Jackson as such a protector role. And that's kind of lost in comics anymore. It's really gone. It's, I guess the best way to put it is the women always protect themselves because they are strong, beautiful, independent women, right? Yay, queen. Well, not this time. Of course, she's a child, and I get that. But we've had ch children go up in the Teen Titans go up against the biggest of enemies. But he's still there. And he wants to be there as her protector. And I really, really think that's awesome. You know, and she doesn't as much. But roles will be reversed here in a minute. So the water changes color all of a sudden. And they're not sure why. And that's because some sort of shift that happened within Death Metal has changed them over to a completely different Earth. And they visit quite a few of them they actually end up in all visiting seven and that is all of the different oceans within the confluence which is the massive ocean above the world and that's exactly where they're at we see them right here in the con confluence and um you know i love this idea i really really do and it's kind of amazing to really see it acted out now we are back to current timeline or future state timeline. Again, uh, this is the last time I'm going to say it, I promise. But this just looks so much like Jason Momoa to me. It really, really does. So Jackson is talking to the, the person of the confluence. And basically what the confluence does for a person is give them clarity. Clarity is what it does. Now they say, if you would have told me who you were... I could have helped you. I could have greatly improved your time here. What they don't know is what he means by this is simply he was going to take all of his trauma away. And that would have changed him as a person. I don't think they realize taking someone's trauma away is going to completely change your personality. So we see them talking here and they're trying to find out and they're sitting on this island, right? Soon they find out that this island is not an island. It is actually a monster and it protects all seven of the worlds within the confluence. And um, we see a, a massive fight and it seems to make them whenever they get close, very, very sleepy. And we actually see uh, more injury than I suspected. Now he's trying everything he can do to actually save her to protect her and she's kind of trying to take control of it we know that's her powers but she can't she's getting too too tired right and she's getting too weak so she's saying you know I i'm sorry i can't do this and he's like no don't you dare don't you dare i love just the little dots of tears in her eyes i think it's really really pretty 
So we see him fall, 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 and she's still up in the tentacles. And we actually see her, her leg completely get cut off. And it looks like by her own doing. How that happened, uh, I, it's not exactly explained because we're seeing it from his kind of view. But yes, her leg is completely gone. I'm sorry if I'm a little quick with this. I, I'm doing screen recording and it's not as good as, as, as editing, but it doesn't take near as long either. So she's looking at him and she's saying, tell them I love them. Tell my parents I love them. And then we go back to him down the road. And he actually seems to be pretty fearless in this point. You know, he's saying that he's wasteful as a person because he doesn't want to get rid of the trauma. He's pretty confident in himself. And we don't actually know why. So he says, you know, we're not savages. We could have taken that trauma. What kind of a broken species sees trauma as and regret as virtue? It's not that changes you uh, and if you take that trauma away you could be a completely completely different person so here we go everything starts to go on off an alarm right this is why he was so confident you even see the tears in his eyes now he kept he did it you know keep the promise he thinks he says but if she survived I kept a promise I made to her parents. I gave her everything I had, everything she needed to survive out there. And now we see her and she's back. We actually don't see her. I apologize, but we, we know that she's going to be back. And that's because we see, uh, well, we see a little bit of a shadow here, him, you know, fighting him, but we see aqua woman lives and he says she is, she's back. She's here and he's, um, it's not polite to keep her waiting and he walks away, right? He's got to take on everybody, but he walks away. These look just like, just almost identical to what was in Aquaman. Uh, not, um, it doesn't worry me, I guess isn't the best way to put it, but it definitely shows me that they should have done a, a little bit more research. I'm not saying that Brandon didn't do his research. I'm saying make this itself. Make this unique to itself. Don't make this an Aquaman 2.0 because these aren't even the characters in that movie. Don't make it so cookie cutter as far as the art go. And I'm not talking about the writing because I thought the writing was great, but some of the art style definitely favors from that movie. I think they probably have watched it a few times. So anyways, I absolutely love this. I love Andy. She is one of my favorite new characters. I really think she's a good addition to the Aquaman family. And I'm curious to see how Jackson became Aquaman and not Andy. I, I think, I think at least it'll be for a good story. I think he was due anyway. So let me know, of course, what you guys think about all of this. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. I want to give a huge shout-out to my Patreon and subscribe stars. You guys literally make this channel possible. Huge thank you to Cage the Mick, Robert Mick Twiz, Black Knight Fool, Brucey, Chris Z, David L., David Rafford, Jeffrey Allen Carnes, Mighty Paws, Mike Buckner, Mizen Barbosa, Ruskar, Ryan Decker, Robert Hoffman, and Doc Holiday. You guys are absolutely amazing, and thank you so much for all your support. Don't forget on the way out to like as always if you enjoy the content and hit subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.